Are you lost? You seem lost. It's okay, you're home now. Back to where you belong on this channel. Just click that subscribe button and press that little notification bell so you'll know I'm always here. It's gonna be okay. What was that? Oh, you are actually lost. Sorry about that, I just thought... Never mind. In any case, Community Pharmacy may be able to help you either way. Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel, where we're currently looking at the essential services in Community Pharmacy. Today, we'll be looking at signposting, or in other words, Community Pharmacy's role in directing you to the right place for health and social care needs. It can often be overwhelming when you don't know where to turn for a particular service, or when you don't know what's out there. Want to stop smoking but don't know how? Need a safe place for needle and syringe exchange? Emergency contraception? Maybe a loved one has a life-changing condition and you wanted to know what different organisations might be able to do. There can be a whole host of these scenarios and it's easy to feel lost and helpless when you don't know where to go or who to turn to. So, how can the pharmacy help? Well, in some cases it might be the pharmacy can provide the service that you're after. And if it can't, the pharmacy can direct you to the appropriate place that can for support, advice or treatment. Where appropriate, this could take the form of a referral. This also ties in with the services a pharmacy provides. If you remember from the first video on what community pharmacy is, not all pharmacies provide all services on the NHS. There are some services that can only be provided by specific pharmacies where there's a local need and funding for them to provide it. Do you remember what type of service that is? <coughs> no? You may want to refresh your memory with this video. Now, there are two main reasons a pharmacy might not provide a particular NHS service. Number one, it isn't commissioned to do so. Or in other words, the pharmacy isn't funded to provide it, or the funding's available for the pharmacy, but the pharmacy chooses not to. Number two, it might be the pharmacy's commission to provide the service, but the pharmacist that's working that day hasn't completed the necessary training to provide it, or due to their own values or beliefs, are unable or unwilling to provide that service. If, for instance, they have religious or ethical viewpoints for not supplying medication under a particular service, they don't have to supply it. However, this is where signposting comes into it. In both cases, there's a responsibility to direct you to where you can get access to the service. So there we go. As always though, there is more to it than this. If a pharmacist, due to their own values or beliefs, chooses not to supply medication or carry out a service, they mustn't impose these viewpoints on other people and have to take responsibility for ensuring that person-centered care isn't compromised because of their values and beliefs. The professional should take steps to make sure the person asking for care is at the center of their decision making, so they can access the service needed in a timely manner without hindrance. So. Let's say Pharmacy A usually provides a service giving emergency contraceptive on a scheme in an NHS contract, but the pharmacist working that day is unhappy to provide it due to their own beliefs. That pharmacist may then direct you to Pharmacy B, the nearest pharmacy that provides it, or an alternative healthcare provider, such as a sexual health clinic, that's able to provide the emergency contraception free of charge. So. Even where the pharmacy itself doesn't provide that service, it still takes steps to direct you to a nearby place that does, to ensure you are able to get access to the service and provide continuity of care. It's kind of like having a travel tour guide for your health and social care or support needs, that shows you what's around if they can't take you there themselves. Or if Google Maps had a physical store with professional advisors. Remember the clue is in the name. Your community pharmacy has been around where many shops around them have opened and closed, standing the test of time as the neighbourhood as you knew it changed. They might know quite a lot about who can do what for you and when you might need to see another healthcare professional, or why it's probably best not to buy that medicine that you found online that would legally need a prescription. 
The idea here is that pharmacy enables you to contact or access further care and support appropriate to your needs, helping to minimize the inappropriate use of health and social care services. By directing you to the right place, this can save time and public money for services that can otherwise be accessed at a pharmacy or alternative port of care. And they say we're just glorified shopkeepers. Honestly. Thanks again for watching. As always, your support's much appreciated. Please stick around, share, like and subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you next week.